Let's go! It's another no no show. Math was is knocking these pre cure seasons out. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, pretty cure. <laughs> okay, you fucking got me there. <laughs> All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of the No No Show Cast. Uh, we're taking at care of more more pretty cure. Um, so yeah, like the last time with Tropical Rouge, uh, it has been a little while for me. Uh, in fact, for me, it's been an extra year on top of that. So uh, I will do my best to contribute to the discussion, despite having not touched the show in um, yeah over two years now. Um, except, uh, nope, never mind. I was, uh, yeah, there's, cause there is, there were two movies. Uh, I only saw the first one because it crossed over series I, I had seen. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen the second one, which crossed over with the yes, SPQ five, which I have not seen. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah I always get confused when I'm looking into those like pre cure crossover movies. Cause like, I know, um, when I was looking for the one that was crossed over, with healing good in the previous two seasons that on Mal that was listed under star twinkle. So I was like, really, there was only one huh. movie. And then I had to dig and I'm like, Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, like this will actually be the first time. I mean, I realize now it's a weird point to open on talking about the movies, but, uh, uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I'll finally be able to watch one of the three season crossover movies because I've seen hug <laughs> Toe, star twinkle and now healing good. So, uh, that's exciting. That's not part of my daily Magical Girl episodes. I'm just going to have to do that on my own time. Mm-hmm. They also didn't do one like this. I guess they stopped doing those because I don't think there was one for Tropical Rouge and Healing Good. Yeah, the Tropical Rouge movie was the Heart Catch pr- crossover, so you couldn't watch that one either. <laughs> um, so, unfortunate. So, yeah, uh, I guess, how do we do this again? Um, general thoughts, I suppose? Um, well, you, yeah, you came so... fresh off of it, so why don't you share? Yeah, um... Um, Yeah, I thought... Um... Like, the main thing that I talked about in my tweet for it was just that I feel like the characters in this season are really strong. Um, maybe, like, on an individual level, they're, I mean, they're not all, like, favorites for me. But just in mm-hmm. terms of, like, I liked the dynamic between, like, the main villain trio and how they're always just kind of bickering and mad at <laughs> each other. Uh, but they also still sort of have, like, a loose sense of camaraderie in that as well. Um And then, obviously, like, this season, how, like, the mascot characters are integrated is very good as well. Uh, Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't don't have the proper context on Precure as a whole to know kind of where these rank at, like, how how, uh, new of a concept this is. But um, at the very least, it it was nice to see. uh, And it's, like, easily the mascot characters in this season uh, are kind of by default um, some of the better ones because it's, like, they have kind of character arcs and as Mm -hmm. opposed to just sort of being there um you know kududun i love kududun not much you know not much of a a character just kind of (laughs) chilling she's just a a vibe a pure vibe and aesthetic where it's just like here's this very fucking adorable seal who just just chills and is cute right like kududun is is peak but you know as far as like yeah as far as that kind of mascot goes but yeah these characters these mascots they have yeah like you said arcs going on and i remember like you know um the rabbit one having an episode where she liked a certain a weird looking stuffed animal and you know that was kind of you yeah know, like that uh, Nyatora had uh some good episodes with hinata which i remember liking uh like i i, I know i have a screen cap of the ashtono joe uh burned to white ashes uh because i always take str- yeah, try to take yeah. screen caps of those <laughs> okay. and it's extra funny seeing it in like fucking pretty cure with this cute mascot character like something about it is just like inherently silly i guess um <laughs> yeah i know in this season I, I there were like quite a few references that i caught because obviously there's like uh there's like the poster of the the dory yes. movie from that year and um there's also a reference to like there's an episode with the blimps and you mm-hmm. see like a giant um uh Purun's face and uh the, the sh- like, yeah. rocket ship Right, uh, right, from Star Twinkle. Yeah, and then, yeah, um, like, the Joe reference, and there was, like, a beach volleyball <laughs> episode that I'm not entirely sure what specifically it was in reference to, but it felt like some sort of Dezaki, uh thing. Uh, no, ho- wait, was it? I, I, uh, shit, I forget. There was a, yeah, I do remember there's a volleyball anime, like, an older one I've heard of. I forget if it was Dezaki. I know that the characters were girls, but, yeah, that totally could have been. Ah, uh, damn it. 
attack number one is that it oh um, maybe maybe, maybe i think that, that was yeah it. i think that might be the volleyball one I, I think i'm not going to double check it but uh, i can i can look comments, it up in the edit uh, or someone can point it out to me <laughs> if shaves is watching this one he's like mad right now because he's like how did they not get no i don't, I don't know i was just like because he's watched some he watched the door maybe once he probably wouldn't watch this one but uh <laughs> uh but yeah um, i think just also like you know the main trio of characters is good um you know, trying to avoid talking about the spoilers, so I won't talk about right, the right. mid-season cure just yet. Uh, but I felt like, yeah, like just the way that I guess all the characters were used and the the dynamics between uh, like the healing animals and uh, the main characters and how they're all kind of like reflected in each other. And then also some of the, the way that some of the antagonists kind of like worked as foils or like contrasts to, uh, I, mm. I felt like just in terms of like, even if the maybe personalities of some of the characters aren't necessarily like my favorites i think just the way that all the characters are used is very effective no yeah that makes sense well because the uh uh, the name is slipping my mind but the writer of the season um was it komura junko i no i feel i feel like i'm getting part of the name wrong i'll fact check it yeah she yeah you'll find it and tell me but if i remember correctly she is also the main writer of um lupon ranger versus pat ranger which is literally like my favorite tokusatsu show and oh. i think the writing's phenomenal and i made a whole 22 minute video explaining like the main character's arc and the whole point of the show um so you know uh, writing wise i definitely don't remember feeling uh, at least re- from le- weekly watching that healing good was as strong but like the fact that you know you can still like see that you know it's like yeah it's solid like there's you know stuff going on there and you know the characters work well so like um you know so i think she's a good writer um, and maybe if I rewatched Healing Good, I'd feel differently and just things would cl- click with me better. But um, even just from what I watched, you know, even if I don't like I don't love this season, I would say, but it's it's pre here. I've literally yeah. never outright disliked the season. And I, the worst I, I've gotten is I just don't care for Max Hart whatsoever. Yeah, uh, like that's ba- that, and I obviously there's more seasons to watch. But like, I think I'm going to baseline enjoy any season of Precure I watch because I just fundamentally enjoy like I feel the same way about Super Sentai where because which I've co- compared the two um in that, that they're a bit similar like structurally with how, and how they have like these larger casts and this year-long um cycle where it just like I just fundamentally like this kind of ongoing story I guess yeah and, and so, I, I kind of um, had yeah. a moment myself uh recently where you know I was kind of like going through part of the midpoint of the season but then, and I, I was sort of like, you know, yeah, Precure seasons, it always kind of feels like there are going to be some episodes or certain uh, stretches of episodes where maybe it's not quite uh, as hype as other stretches of the season. But then I was like describing it to a friend who uh, uh, hasn't seen Precure at all. Uh-huh. And um, when I was like describing it to someone who didn't, you know, didn't really have any experience with Precure. It's like, oh, wow, yeah, this is just inherently cool. Like, even if <laughs> on an episode-by-episode episode basis, maybe I kind of forget that after a point, you know, because I'm right now going through uh, trying to watch an episode of Magical Girl anime a day for a whole year. So um, just kind of reminded me that it's like, yeah, this is why I'm interested in, in this uh, genre and uh, this particular format, because it's, yeah, there's a lot of it that's just inherently cool, and uh it's good no yeah i like having these long shows because they can spend the time going into each of these little characters and doing stuff with them right or even just having episodes like uh with side characters like or just one off one episode like i remember one episode i'm trying to remember it was around the middle of the show uh where there's some older people i think that's right like old friends who broken up and they like you know through the conflict of the episode they'd like you know they sort of went you know got over their old hangups or something ah, is that i think i'm remembering but uh but yeah no there's it's just i i like long stories and you know uh this is a, one, of the, one of those examples even if it was uh cut a little bit short uh by covid uh infamously um where it's like you also had the uh like uh with the movie i think i mentioned it to you but like it opens up with because because at the point the movie came out uh cure earth or the, the mid-season cure was already part of the show um and they literally yeah. just said like yeah this character is not appearing in this movie because the movie was supposed to come out before the character was introduced uh, uh so okay. so i thought it was kind of, like they had to explain why this character isn't in the movie to kids who wouldn't like get it basically 
yeah. or understand the difficult the production issues and you know like so um yeah yeah um yeah i thought all things considered um because obviously like the pandemic is a pretty big you know uh pretty big subject hanging over this whole season i thought like uh granted i wasn't following it week to week so i don't know what it would have been like for the weekly viewing uh-huh. experience um but I felt like I was kind of surprised that it didn't really feel like the season was hindered too much by that. No, like it yeah, felt like sure. the story hit all the beats it was trying to hit. And like at most, you know, maybe there were just like a couple of, you know, fluffier episodes that might have gotten cut. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think I heard uh, maybe it was Hinata or maybe it was Chiu. Uh, I forget. But apparently there was supposed to be a bit more focus on the mother but of or of their mother one of their mothers but i forget which one but um what i was gonna to add on to that is because um pre here also runs alongside like uh, uh you know super sentai and common writer and yeah. i remember from what i remember is that like uh K- kiramajer the super sentai season was also affected like had its delay early on so it wasn't really negative affected fe- negatively affected either like it's still one of the most loved modern seasons um, the show that was affected by COVID was uh, Common Rider Zero One, which, in comparison, was going towards its e- so like imagine a show go like this going towards its end, and suddenly it loses yeah. like five or t- ten of its episodes in the yeah. last part of the show. Like apparently, it just because it got super rushed and chaotic, and it just didn't it didn't work out. And I guess there I don't know if they you know because there's like oh, movies and extra stuff they do after the fact uh, in general. So I, I you know hopefully that was able to like mend some of that but it, you know from yeah. the, from the outside looking in because i wasn't watching the show it sounds really unfortunate that for the people who like that show to have it just get hit by factors completely outside of anyone's control right yeah like, especially um, when you're so tied to a yearly release like this i can definitely imagine how it's like oh panic mode um but yeah like this had only gotten about like a core in and hadn't even introduced the mid-season cure yet uh yeah so um yeah i felt like they uh recovered pretty well but uh, granted i don't know what the behind the scenes production was like but in just in terms of uh like narratively and um you know visually i didn't think this season was like particularly flashy in any way there's just kind of <laughs> wasn't anything that i had to take away from it in that way yeah um, yeah it was it was a solid like baseline i guess like it was consistent it wasn't yeah. so it wasn't it, it never looked bad i would say but um well okay i say that but i did just remember i never took a screenshot but in the episode i think i was remembering earlier there was a, a brief like shot where um the perspective is a little weird and latte is like because latte latte she's like running up a hill and the other characters are at the bottom of the hill and the perspective at, at, at least at first glance it looks like she's giant basically um and i just <laughs> remembered that but no overall like yeah the season looks like perfectly fine visually even though obviously precure can look fucking phenomenal at times like you know go princess goes hard smile precure goes hard like you know they could do some really visual crazy stuff um but you know overall not every series is going to be like that which is understandable for any you know long-running production so um but yeah i think healing good looks decent if, if not amazing um, but it doesn't, like, like I said, it doesn't really get bad at any point. Like, there's no point where, like, the characters are melting or the action isn't, like, making sense or, you know, it's, it's solid. Um, there was actually which... one thing I meant to check in Star Twinkle, but I completely forgot. Um, cause I know, like, you know, when, when, like, the characters transform and there's, like, a battle with the big monster of the week villain type, um, you know, like the the kind of environment shifts and like uh-huh. takes on different colors and but I don't know, like did that start in Heal and Good or do I just not remember the seasons from years ago? Um, if you don't remember a- either, that's probably an unfair question. <laughs> I don't see well because mostly what I think about is because how Delicious Party did it is that there's a character who literally like whenever the monster fight happens he they tell they get teleported to like an alternate like rocky area to oh. fight so that way they don't affect the area negatively basically um, where obviously in comparison like um, with uh, Hero Girl as we're watching right now uh, the damage just gets undone when when they beat the monster. Right. So, um, so, so when I, so when I think of like getting, you know, yeah, the area changing, like I, my thoughts are on Delicious Party. So I'm like, and I haven't seen this show in a while. So it's, I'm uh-huh. struggling to remember like, well, how, I'm thinking like, was, yeah. you know, it, it also happened in Tropical Rouge where they're like in the middle of the battle, you know, like the sky changes colors and like the environment kind of will have blotches of okay. different colors oh, here and I there. How you mean. And then once yeah, the battle um, is over, it disappears. And this season okay, kind of yeah. had it being where like there will be little like patches of red kind of spread out all over Mm -hmm. 
Um, right, and it just makes for an interesting visual. Yeah. Um, no, that yeah, I have not thought about that going back because uh, I don't remember anything like that in, um, off the top of my head in Alamode, Hugto, or Star Twinkle. But again, I also ha- wasn't paying. I haven't seen yeah. those shows in a while, and I wouldn't have been looking for it actively. So um, I'll keep that in mind. But yeah, I, I guess yeah. Overall, it's it's just a, a decently solid season. You know, I like the cast of characters. I like the anta- I remember liking the antagonists. Um, like I said, it looks visually fine. Like I guess that's the thing. It's where like there isn't much exceptional or super. Like I have a couple things that I particularly like about the season, um, or got out of the season. But it doesn't. You know, I like com- to compare to like like Delicious Party, where I think it's also pretty fine all around. But then it still has some like like I thought the fucking second to last episode was really fucking good. Yeah. Um, and just some, you know, some standout stuff where, you know, healing good, I feel like aside from a few smaller moments that I thought were really good, um, you know, it just does, it, you know, it's not a super standout season, um, which I don't know, um, how the, I don't know what the general reception is because I just do not engage with the Precure fan base whatsoever. Um, so I, don't, I, I imagine that people weren't too big on it. Just, I don't know, but I, I or vaguely remember that, but it's also been so while since I would have heard opinions that I already knew. That I yeah, I've I've only in seen the first... like the one video that um, back when I did the guest eighty two digest, um, you know, th- there was a video uh, from a creator who was like watching all the pre cure that came out that week, and it, it just happened to be about healing good, and that was actually what got me interested in checking it out in the first place. This was back kind of uh, summer twenty twenty one, and you know, the conclusion that they seemed to draw was that you know it, it had good things, it had bad things, it was kind of you know middle of the road sort of Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i feel like i can't get too much into the the points i liked from that video until we get into the more spoiler talk um yeah i was feeling that we should probably get into that with just because i would finish off on just you know from what i remember like you know it's a perfectly decent pre-cure season and as someone who's just going to go through the whole franchise anyway i definitely don't regret having watched it and it's probably one of the ones i want to rewatch the most in that because it's been so long since I went through it weekly and, you know, weekly watching versus binge watching is so different, um, you know, so um, I'm very curious to go back to it. But uh, yeah, I, it's still a fun season. It's not the first I'd recommend, um, but, you know, it's not one that I think uh, I wasted my time with. So, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It's definitely like, if you know, it's it's not like not the experience i had with like futariwa where it's like that's that's definitely towards the bottom and it's not like hug toe <laughs> either so, so it's kind of like somewhere in the middle but um yeah like we kind of said earlier that precure is just kind of inherently cool so if you're also of that mindset then um there's definitely good things to take away from healing good um yeah give me a cute girl in a in a pretty dress punching the shit out of monsters i'm probably gonna give it a thumbs up right like (laughs) hello uh so yeah moving into spoilers um did you want to talk about that video starting off that might just give us some stuff to build off of okay Um, yeah uh that works um yeah so like i remember a big point uh that i remember uh this was uh the youtuber was uh trno by the way um the, like I said, if, I can link the video in the description. That's probably the easier way to do it. I'm mm-hmm. smart. Um, <laughs> uh, a big point that I remember them bringing up uh, that got me interested in the season in the first place and, um, you know, eventually finishing it like a year and a half after watching the first handful of episodes um, was still kind of the big sticking point for me in terms of like what I took away from this, se- uh, from this season. Um, the whole like narrative thread between um Noroka and uh Daruizen I thought mm-hmm. was um like I just thought it was really interesting and it definitely like where it sort of ended um you know the whole sort of point about like like you know this is a season about healing and like healing the earth and also like you know healing the people around you healing yourself and um self-care kind of playing a big uh, mm-hmm. factor in that and like with Nodoka's whole arc of like you know she was this um very ill child who uh eventually kind of got better but her life was really shaped by that illness mm-hmm. and uh yeah just the whole the whole idea of like the antagonists being these parasites that you know gr- that like grew from these people and you know caused them harm and then um 
so it's like you know in in some seasons the antagonists are kind of like redeemable um like human or not uh it's usually sort of they might get to a point of um you know like i think in uh star twinkle for example like the um the kappa and and that crew like they uh kind of end off on a better note like i think they kind of have a bit of a redemption um and in hug toe mm-hmm. as well you know that they, they kind of have that you know, uh, we talked about it better in the hug toe video i can't remember it off the top of my head but like in this season it's very clearly like these antagonists are not meant to be redeemed uh and mm-hmm. like in the case of dado Izen in particular he is just a piece of shit he <laughs> loves to undermine the earth and to just be like a leech on other people's lives um, mm-hmm. and so I really liked how that, well, like just the, the, that connection in general, uh, I thought was really interesting for like a pre-cure season to, not that, you know, there aren't characters who like, there aren't, I mean, there have been antagonists in the past who parallel the protagonist, but I felt mm-hmm. like this was the most I really like connected with that, um, just like Angle. the hostility and the dynamic between them. Um, Mm -hmm. And how, like, thematically kind of the two characters contrast, but also kind of in the way that the arc concludes, you know, with the whole, um, you know, the whole message of self-care where, like, um, you know, Noroka wants to, like, heal everyone and and help the world. But, uh, you know, uh, Rabi Reen kind of has this conversation with her where it's like, you know, you're allowed to put yourself first. Mm -hmm. And, like especially in this particular situation where it's like she suffered for years because of this parasite that was growing inside her. And so even when she has that instinct of like, you know, she wants to help everybody and that sort of being challenged and she kind of had to take that moment to, you know, regardless of what she thinks she should do, she should do what she wants to do, which is, you know, put herself and her health first. And, um, you know, especially with the fact that it is such a, like, um, Darui Zen is not a good person mm-hmm. and would absolutely, like, there's nothing in it for her if she did save his life. Um, and it's that's that's kind of like a message that really personally resonates with me because um, I am mm-hmm. very much someone who will uh, overextend myself for the sake of other people to the point where, like, you know, I, I feel like if I have the energy to give, uh, even if it means like being at my own detriment to where I don't have the energy when I need to do things, uh, I feel guilty if I do not give that of myself. Like it, it feels like something I have to do, but that's mm-hmm. not necessarily the healthiest mindset. And I really like how that was uh, integrated in, into this season. Um, I might have missed a couple points that I wanted to add on to that, but that's... I feel like I rambled enough. <laughs> no, you're fine. No, I, I, I have a couple uh, ways I could uh, jump off of that. And I guess to f- talk a first with, because yeah, I, Nodoka is definitely my favorite character in yeah. the show, um, even if it's been a, a while. Um, like, Asumi is silly and a goofball. Uh, Chiyu's cool. Uh, Hinata's cute and adorable and dumb and stupid. I love her. Uh, but <laughs> Nodoka, like, very immediately, because uh, so... Um, so 2020 was the year my mom passed away. And before that even happened, um, obviously she'd like been in the hospital and she was fighting cancer and all that. Yeah. And yeah. one specific, uh, she went to the hospital a couple of times and I forget cause there was, um, I remember one of them, she literally like, it had to do with her fucking lungs because she'd been smoking since she was a teenager and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, she not in great health. And like, I, I think they like needed to get some drain stuff drained out of them. And they, she sho- they shoved like tubes into her body. And it was like, she described, mentioned it's some of the worst pain she'd ever been in her life. And yeah. what, but what stuck with me is when she came back from the hospital and she said that like, while she was sitting there in her bed, again, in some of the worst pain in her life, she was thinking of her kids. Like, are we going to be fine? And I'm like, mm-hmm. and obviously like, that's, you know, like she's the one who needs to think of herself first. And yeah, so, like, yeah. in episode... So, around this the same time, when episode two of Healing Good Precure came out, we have Nodoka, who has been in a, in a hospital for her whole life, and, like, Robbie Rin is, like, trying to, like, be like, you know, maybe you shouldn't be a Precure. It's gonna be dangerous. You're gonna get hurt. But she's like, well, I want to pay forward what I've been given, you know, because, like, while yeah. she's been in a hospital, she's been thinking of other people. And, you know, and just like that, 
you know, got to me a bit personally, and I fucking, like, I'm tearing up in episode two, and I'm like, well, fuck me. <laughs> the yeah. show just started, and it's already making me feel things like this. I can't do that. Um, and so, like, Nodoko was, like, very quickly endeared to me, um, and, uh, you know, I only liked her more as the show went on. So, you know, um, and I feel like I'd, if I re- were to rewatch the show, I'd probably like, come come away from it, like, thinking even stronger of her, like, just getting all of her arc at once, basically, and not having, you know, the two-year difference, but... Um, yeah, yeah. So that, so that was one way I immediately connected to the show, and there's just a go off of, like, you know, yeah, the conflict with her and Darius, and where it's, like, what I was picking up from the show that I still remember somehow was just the, the whole general conflict of, like, selflessness and selfishness, where, which is, I really like the way it was, like, explored in a, not a binary way as um which, yeah you know precure is really good about of, of having this because in other seasons they'll li- like even literalize the conflict with having like you know the in hugto they have the asa power and the toga power where it's literally like um you know hope for the future and um anxiety for the future in di- these different you know or the lazy like where so healing good doesn't literalize the idea but it's still does a good job of exploring it and like in these different ways like especially like with Nodoka and you know putting herself first like she can't be purely selfish and or selfless and give herself to everyone because then there's yeah. nothing of her left where Daruzen like I, I just noticed saw my note where it's just framing him as someone who like he only wants like like because he com- in the end of the show he comes to ask for help but he doesn't you know he's not a good person he doesn't want anything he does he's not going to give anything in return or be you know right so yeah like, yeah he, I, there he's... was even a line in kind of that final fight with him um where noroka is like uh well then what do you do after that like what happened like if i if i you know help heal you then like you know what's what what are you gonna do for me what are you gonna are you gonna go back to doing what you were gonna do and it's like you know he gets frustrated because it's like yeah that was exactly what he was gonna do um Mm -hmm. so it's like he in a you know even if he's like going to her for help it's still the very selfish desire of like i'm gonna heal up and i'm gonna go back to doing exactly what i was doing regardless of how it's going to affect you Right. So, and it's just like it. it what leads to that more, you know, n- you know, non-binary uh, confrontation is just like, yeah, Daruzen is this utter like being of selfishness. Or Nodoka does start off the series being this utter being of selflessness, but how she, you know, overcomes him is by being a bit more selfish, right? So, uh, like in a sense, kind of becoming more like him, but in a positive way, right? Because she already has that basis of selflessness. Um, and then, you know, I yeah. just noticed it throughout the rest of the conflict and ep- a lot of episodes sort of dealing like, like Asumi being super like, cause there was, uh, when she, uh, first was a, a person, I remember her being super protective of Latte to the point of being like choking and constricting because she yeah. was forcing her selflessness onto Latte without actually understanding, uh, what, what she wanted. Right. And so she had to reconcile that. And, um, you know, I just remember that being like, or the, what's the, what's the girl's name? The girl disease. Uh, um, one. Shindoine. Um, Shindoine. Thank you. Like, uh, you know, she had this, um, you know, again, like kind of selfishness and selflessness where it's like, she get, was giving herself completely to the King, uh, pathogerm. Right. And so, which was literally how her character ended because she just has this undying devotion at, with no, real like you know so it's like again sort of like her absolute desire pushed to an extreme point and yeah it was just like i i just like the way noticing the ways that was layered throughout you know the conflict and characters even if uh, again it's been a while so i don't remember like i can't really tie it to like hinata or chiyu unless i maybe dig through my notes and really like oh that's right i remember now um but uh or again if i rewatch the show you know so yeah it's just a good narrative thread throughout the whole show, show that uh, i thought worked pretty well so yeah um yeah, yeah, and like you said about um, kind of how uh, Noroka has to sort of adopt that selfless or selfishness. Um, I can't talk, uh, <laughs> and how that kind of is like for as much as the two like contrast each other. Um, she has a line that's like, you know, my body and soul are my own, and Daruizen very much operates by the same mentality, uh, mm-hmm. where like he does not really serve King Byogen. Um, not loyally, he just kind of is in it for whatever will be fun for him. Uh, so it is really interesting seeing, you know, a protagonist in that way sort of adopt kind of aspects of the antagonist into their personality, um, but like in a in a positive way, because it's like the way that um, the way that, the way that like the self the self care part of it is handled, um, mm-hmm. you know, makes it that like it's clearly not that she's doing a negative thing. 
Um, but it, yeah, it's just interesting. Yeah, there's just so much that I like about how uh, the dynamic between those two is handled, even if it's very clearly like, uh, you know, one of them is not a good person. One of them is. Uh, it's it's interesting seeing how they play off each other in that way. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, it's like, I think for that reason, I would probably say that Darui Zen might just be my favorite Precure antagonist to this point. Ooh, yeah, no, um, I, uh, okay. Like, um, I... That's a, that's a good pick, I think. Um, yeah, like, I, I would have to look back at some of the other seasons. Like, there might be, like, a hug toe antagonist who actually takes it for me. Um, but yeah, just the way, yeah, the way that he was utilized and the way he plays off the other antagonists. Um, like, I remember there being a scene where, like, uh, Shindo Ine and Guaiwaru are like they're just bickering with each other over something and there's just kind of this look on Darui Zen's face where he's clearly like like above it all but it almost seems like uh, I don't know if I actually have the screen cap on hand I can't find it but you know it's just like oh here they go again you know like kind of <laughs> like siblings or it's like yep they're they're at it again um so kind of like annoyed, but also like this is this is how things are. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, as far as the other antagonists go, like I thought Shindo Ine and like you said, the selfless devotion to uh, King Byogen was uh, kind of interesting. Uh, I really didn't have anything to take away from Guai. I don't remember. Like I remember his design. Like I can picture him on my head. You know, his big buff dude. But like I'm trying to think of. Like I'd have to go through my notes to see if I got anything out of him because at least after two years, I just uh, and the fact that you just watched the show and you also don't. That, I don't know. That's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah, and like the, there was the whole sort of twist at the end where it's like he kind of undercut the king to become new king, but it was actually part of the king's plan to be undercut so he could under so it's like the antagonists are literally undermining each other um mm -hmm. which i thought is like you know because that was the term that they used for how they were infecting the earth so i did think it was interesting how and like you said with the self selflessness and selfishness kind of contrast how um the antagonists are always kind of like even in terms of how they were using the mega parts where it's like they will summon a Byogen, but then they'll like take part of part of the Byogen and like use it to strengthen something else. But in that way, it's still kind of like undermining. Um, like I'm not entirely sure. I I have had a thought of like how that like the Mega Parts uh, implementation kind of parallels or contrasts. I'm not really sure with how like the element bottles that the Precure kind of accumulate okay. over time where it's sort of like they take a little bit of the elements to heal Latte and then, like, use their abilities. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, because it's kind of like they're both sort of taking to give back, kind of, but it's in very different ways. Um, like, okay. I guess the Precures are using it to, like, use these abilities to help heal, whereas when the Bjolgens, or I forget exactly what they're called, maybe the, the main trio aren't, um, but like when they undermine uh, their monsters that they create, it's, I guess, not really to give back to everything. It's kind of just to, you know, further propel their like selfish desire to, to create more destruction. I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like there's okay. a point there. Okay, no, yeah, um, it, no, it definitely sounds interesting. I just, uh, again, um, uh, I was trying to, yeah, because I definitely I feel like it's been a while, but I do uh, re vaguely remember thinking that the way that, like, they explored the villain's mechanics in the first place was kind of neat, because, like, I remember they there's, like, the rat guy, or the whatever, the rodent, who became a monster, and then they kind of, like, which they used to build into, like, how they yeah, were made in the first place. Over. Yes, thank you. And just, you know, and yeah, like, the, yeah, um, messing, like, just ex having these different mechanics with how, and exploring that aspect of how they even made the monsters, and using that to build into other parts of the story. Uh, I, I, you know, again, it's harder for me to come up with exact details, but I feel like that was, I'm not wrong in saying that was a thing in the show, and I think it was yeah. neat. Um, yeah, I thought it was also interesting, like, just talking about Batsute Moda, and, you know, as far as, like, his place in the antagonists, I did find it really interesting that, um, you know, the, like, an enemy was created, like, a new recurring enemy was created out of, like, uh, a mistake in battle from the Precures, um, because, yeah, like, uh, I forget exactly how it is, like, part of the, the Biogen kind of splits off, 
uh, before they're able to purify it because they took too mm-hmm. long. Because that was the episode where there are like three different things happening at once yeah. and they try oh, to do right. it individually yeah. and that doesn't work out. So then they all come together. Um, but yeah, that leads to Batate Moda being created. And uh, yeah, I just thought I thought it was interesting in that way. Um, you know, Batate Moda, I don't think I was the biggest fan of him necessarily, but I think it was probably almost entirely because he was clearly there for like one stretch of the story and so mm-hmm. he was kind of in every episode that he was in and after yeah. a while i think <laughs> like if you're watching it weekly i'm sure it was fine um uh, but like you know, in terms that's a good of, point yeah like i um, kind of got annoyed of his stick but then he was gone and then it's like yeah okay I, I see what they were doing um but that also does kind of lead into uh because that's a stretch of the story where cure earth is introduced um how did, you, how did you feel about her being the... Because she's a very different kind of mid-season cure where, like, usually yes. they'll foreshadow it that, like, oh, here's this relevant, chari- relevant character, you know, um, like uh, the the cat girl from Star Twinkle mm-hmm. or, like, Emiru in Hugtoe. And, and Lulu, for that matter. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and Lulu. Right, where... Yeah, no, but, but uh, this is cause... like just a character who comes out of nowhere. So I'm kind of curious how you felt yes. about well, her. Well, I brought it up with you, but what I noticed is because one of the uh uh because I mentioned Super Sentai before and how Super Sentai typically does its mid season rangers is it will just they come out they usually already have their powers or they're literally about to get them um and then they just sort of jump in and you know they not that they just join the cr- the group immediately they'll like they'll uh-huh. often have some kind of conflict around that but um you know it's very different from how precure normally handles the characters as you were talking about where they'll have the characters in the story before and they'll get their powers during the story um or become a precure during the story but yeah with the way cure earth does it is it is more like super sentai in that way where it just she just comes out into the story fully formed as a cure like we see her cure form before we see her civilian form um yeah and uh as a character like I, I, she's just a silly goofball and i liked her um like she i mean i guess she was honestly immediately endeared to me when uh she's just like i'm gonna go to bed uh the whole earth is my home so i'm just gonna like <laughs> and she just like curls up on the fucking road i'll sleep and- here <laughs> <laughs> she's so stupid and i'm like okay that's adorable um and in general i just like her arc of like well because i was especially thinking of it in like both of my personal tastes and also like precure as a series for children um and that like because i like because I've, I've talked about it but I've, I've grown up in a kind of like toxically masculine household and i think uh-huh. part of the reason i like art that just hurts my emotions and make me cry is because i've i felt like being raised you know i wasn't supposed to show weakness or, you know, and so, like, having characters, like, figuring out their emotions, or especially, like, a character who's repre- who's been holding back, and yeah. just at some point just lets lets it all out, like, those scenes really get to me. So, ha- having Asumi, a character who's literally, like, and because I, I also mentioned I like robot stories, or stories with, yeah, non-humans coming to gr- understand and grapple with humanity. So, Asumi being, you know, the spirit of Earth, who literally, like, you know, doesn't how to people, um, learning how, like learning those more nuanced emotions like separating anger and frustration right like yeah. with, with, with the with the balloon race you know they lost and she's like mad but she doesn't understand like why and they're you know so those just those episodes of her just figuring out those emotions you know i thought maybe would help a child who also needs to learn that sort of emotional um intelligence yeah. of understanding what kind of emotions they're having as a kid and just seeing that represented through asami you know as someone who also you know kind of likes those stories of you know robots figuring out humanity and stuff um so yeah she just like naturally appealed to me in a way um aside from just you know she she's good design uh, as a civilian and as a cure like i mean like, the designs in general are super good um, I think in the show, like, I like, I don't know, I like the, I, Precure in general has so many good designs, but I, I like the group. They're all good. I like them. <laughs> They're silly. Um, yeah. Also on the point with uh, Asumi, um, I really liked how her arc, I guess, kind of concluded in the final battle. Because, um, like, when she's introduced, she is solely, like, devoted to Latte and, like, I am going to put Latte above everything else. Um, but then in the final battle where she figures out that, like, oh, we have to take on, like, part of the Byogen because uh, Byogens absorb other Byogens and um, mm-hmm. and everyone else is like, no, don't do it, you know? And even Noroka is like, I will absolutely not let you do this. I will not let anyone else go through the pain that I experienced. But, you know, even in the face of that, 
and even against like what latte wanted like latte was also like you're my friend you know don't do that uh and she's like well you know this is the one time i'm gonna have to you know be selfish and you know she goes through with her plan and it ends up working and saving the day and she ends up being fine um but yeah like the fact that she even in that moment had to like go against what latte wanted which was very antithetical to how her character was introduced in the bit in the beginning. I thought it was like a good uh, display of that growth, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that that makes sense. I haven't thought about that in a while, but no, for sure. Um... And and yeah, I definitely liked her sort of introductory episodes where you, like you said, just learning about those emotions. um, And it also makes for some really fun gags. Like uh, (laughs) when she is like, Nope, I'm going to take latte and I'm going to leave. And she jumps off the balcony and realizes she can't fly and just crashes to the ground. <laughs> I think I, re- I, 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 um, I, I was just looking through my notes and I have a note that just says, didn't die. And it's like, then it's like, ask me, didn't LOL. Die. And I assume that might've been it because yeah, she's like, well, I didn't die. I, I don't know. Maybe that was, <laughs> if it was episode 39, then uh, I, that was, I, I, if it wasn't, then she'd almost died another time. And I thought that was funny. <laughs> and I know since I brought up the, the Tirano video earlier, um, one point that I, you know, just I did not fully agree with that video, uh, and one of the points was like, I mean, I get where it's coming from. Uh, they say that Asumi is kind of dull, uh, but I feel like, you know, I, I still found the character interesting, even okay. if I yeah, could I mean... maybe get why someone who's mm-hmm. kind of like a character that's kind of like stoic and learning yeah, these things, but like, like right. maybe she could have used a few more episodes, but because of like the pandemic, maybe that that's... was mm-hmm. something that got lost. I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I I liked her. I thought she was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, also, that episode, that same episode of my notes. Uh, I don't know what ha- the fuck happened in this episode. But after they didn't die, ask me, lol. Uh, my last note for the episode is: Did they just perform an assassination? And I don't know what that means. And <laughs> what happened in that episode? An assassination. Do in I episode have that thirty-nine. Note? I don't know what happened. Did they kill the king in that episode? um i don't know oh oh was episode 39 maybe that was the one yeah where they they took out the like shadow of king byogen and okay, then like the gotcha. guaiwaru twist happens um, <laughs> i don't know why i wrote that note so <laughs> uh something else that i also found interesting uh, just you know continuing to talk about the characters because i feel like most of my like most of the th- like the praise i would give this show is in terms of like the character writing and the way that arcs play out um, mm-hmm. and I really thought it was interesting how, like, Hinata, uh, how her sort of character was handled, where she's, like, this scatterbrain, and, you know, in, to, in some ways kind of compulsive, and some of her actions can kind of lead to mistakes, uh, and I like how that mentality sort of, like, uh, built up to where she's, like, oh, I, I like, the way that, I guess, uh, Nyatoran kind of, like, has a conversation with her, uh, once they go into like the Byogen world and things go wrong initially. Um, uh, Nyatoran has a uh, like brief little conversation where it's like, everyone makes mistakes. Uh, you'll feel down if you keep counting them, but like, it's important to remember that there were also times where you did well. And it's like, if there's one thing that is like a strong point about Hinata, it's that she is very compassionate and like very, mm-hmm. um, you know, tries to be very aware of, like, how the people around her are feeling and, like, oh, you know, like, when she has the episode where she takes them out to uh, do clothes shopping or whatever, you know, it's like, okay, how can I, what can I do with this day to try and, like, make things good for my friends, even if, to some extent, she maybe gets a little carried away and then gets worried, like, oh, no, did, you know, did I mess up? Um, And I think as well, just, like, the way that her sort of scatterbrainedness is portrayed... Uh, it feels very, like, ADHD in that way. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. And oh. knowing that, like, it's a kid's show, you know, that could be, like, a good message for, for someone to kind of pick up on, where it's sort of like, um, and I don't know if that's necessarily what they're even going for, but it's it works as an interesting reading, because it's like, even if she, you know, her brain works this way, where she's very scattered, and, you know, doesn't get good grades, and occasionally gets a little too... Um, uh, like a little too reckless about things. Um, mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, there are also positive traits that come out of that. Like, uh, 
what I said earlier, you know, the compassion and things like that. Um, well, um, I'm looking through my notes right now, and I, I there was one episode, episode 13, I have my notes on, where I'm just basically quoting out from my notes, but I do remember it, um, where, like, you know, H- Hinata quits being a precure because it sucks, right? And, yeah. Um, and, like, you know, her being a fuck-up and not having good grades and stuff, like, you know, she struggles... You know, with like, like, you know, that her whole struggle with that episode in particular was just like, you know, if, you know, what's the, especially like, how long are they going to be fighting these monsters? Like, what's the point? And that kind of works with the selflessness, selfishness angle, because she has to like, figure out like, what is she getting out of this, you know, in regards to um, there being meaning behind her fighting and everything and just kind of, you know, and also like, that's like one of the core messages of Precure is like, Precure never give up. So here you have one of the Precures who gives up right for an episode because and has to yeah, figure yeah. her shit out and uh you know and also like uh just mostly what i remember is like because you know i have my notes of course but uh hinata is just fucking adorable like yeah she's got such a good design and i <laughs> so many so good cute. faces and like you know it makes sense that she's paired up with nyataran because she always has like a cat face half the time <laughs> and um, like yeah she's just very animated uh, and her and expressions I, and stuff. I like. I probably immediately came to like her because the, in the opening when she's like doing the pointing dance moves with Nyatora, um in her section of the OP. Yeah, uh, it's just I have screen caps of it and it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, before, I know for yeah. sure that um, I I love that part of the opening and I know for sure that's going to be what I use for the the opening of this video because it's just like. With like the the action animation in the background, but mm-hmm. also the characters doing things, it's just like it, it's so good. No, yeah, um, I know we want to talk about Chiu for a second, but before we get to that, because while we're on the topic of the opening, I want to say like the opening and especially the first ending are so good. Like the op- yeah. one thing that stands to me out to me about the opening is how like well Asumi is integrated. Because sometimes you get awkward openings where like they add the mid season precure and then it's just yeah. a little, little fucking weird. Like uh, Tropical Rouge, like the way they put Laura like in the attack. Uh, uh-huh. in the, it's a little strange, but with uh, Kira Earth, she's in there so seamlessly. It's it's like she was never not there. If that makes sense, like it's yeah, so, yeah. Uh, like yeah, you, then, like sometimes um, it can feel like oh, they had to cut this part out to you know slam this character in here, but it doesn't mm-hmm. quite feel that way uh, with this opening. Right, and uh, and yeah, that whole section that you're, you're you, you know you, you're probably going to use at the start of this episode is just like. You know, it's just really visually fun where you have the juxtaposition between, yeah, the light normal stuff and the action in the background, but it's also, like, just framed perfectly so that, like, nothing, like, it's not never blocking anything, like, important. Like, yeah, you can always kind of, yeah. it's so, it's such a good sequence. Um, and I also really like the first ending in particular, like, um, yes. just visually, especially, <laughs> like, I like the song, of course, but visually, like, the way it sort of represents time with, you know, the passing of the day and the seasons and, mm-hmm. like, the one cut, especially where I think the, the fingers are pointing to the air and you have the stars, which are, like, you know, represented as, li- you know, lines because of, like, the low, the long exposure, like, of the rotation. Of the- like, it's so visually cool and yeah. I haven't seen it in a while and I want to go watch it now, but, um... I don't remember the second ending as much, which, you know... Yeah, I, the second uh, because... one, it, to me, kind of just felt like it was, you know, your more traditional kind of, like, pre-cure dancing ED, mm-hmm. and the song was a little more, like, uh, just a, a chill. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, 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 the first one is really cool, and I like it a lot, but uh, the second one, I don't remember that much. But, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to do a you know, uh, mention those briefly, because uh, they, they still stuck with me after... You know, uh, not having really seen them in a while. I did watch, rewatch the opening earlier today to kind of get me into a, a, a healing good mood. Um, but uh, I did not watch <laughs> the ending, which is like, why did I not watch? I think I might like the ending more than the opening. Like, it's so fun. I like it, you know. Um, so, but. Uh, um, also, just um, before we move on from uh, Hinata and talk about Chiyu, uh, especially like just thinking about um, just the scatterbrainedness and it potentially being kind of like. Uh, you know, it could potentially be analogous to, like, neurodivergency. Um, I really like the, ep- you know, the episode where uh, she's trying to study and there's, like, a little interaction where it's like, what do you not understand? And she's like, I don't know what I don't understand. And then she was like, I don't get why you don't know what you don't understand. And then, uh, and then Hinata is like, I don't know why you don't get it. And it's just like keeps building on each other. And it's a very good, it's a very good joke. But also like, I've definitely been in conversations where it's like, I, I don't know how to tell you what I'm not getting here. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, they're dummies. Um, 
but yeah, no. Um, uh, so yeah, Chiyu, unfortunately, I don't remember as strongly. Like, not that she's not good, but it's just, I feel, you know, she's more toned down compared to the other characters, like, purposefully, which, like, you know, gives for contrast. But as a result, as of me what, not watching the show in two years, like, I don't yeah. have any negative feelings on her. I'm just, like, struggling to remember, uh, particularly, like, I'd have to look through my notes and see if I can pick out any yeah, episodes. Yeah, I feel like in. there's um, th- there's less that I sort of have to say about Chiyu. I think maybe, like, of the characters, she was kind of the one that maybe uh, stood out to me the least. Um, but, like, a point that I remember coming up in the Tirano video, which maybe I'll agree with when I have more context on other Precure, but how, like... Um, you know, so how Chiyu kind of works in contrast in a way to um, the one character that they bring up that I do know is um, uh, Madoka from Star Twinkle. How, okay. you know, there are these characters who are very like rooted in tradition, but the tradition and like the hard, fast um, adherence to it kind of being portrayed as like a suffocating like negative. Um, and so the narrative is all about like trying to break that tradition and kind of come into your own as a person uh mm-hmm. but to you kind of works in like an inverted way where like she does have other desires but and her family assumes that like oh you want to do your high jump thing you don't want to be part of this you know family business that we have so we're gonna take you know we're gonna push you to do your you know the, the sports that you want to do and we'll take care of things here and she was like well no i i do enjoy that traditional um you know, she does enjoy taking care of people. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the fact that, like, the family business is, like, a, um, you know, it's like a, I can't think of the word, it's like an inn where they, like, take care of guests. And so that also kind of works in with the whole, like, healing aspect of the series. Oh, yeah. Where it's, you know, like, taking care of other people. They're wanting her to be more selfish, but, like, her, she does legitimately want to, like, she's not just doing it because she feels obligated to, and, i.e., selflessness, she actually does want to do it for her own reasons, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, again, again, also tying back to, like, the selflessness versus selfishness thing, um, and, yeah, how, like, she's perfectly fine adhering to tradition because it's, like, not something that negatively impacts her, it's something that she finds fulfillment in, and, Mm -hmm. uh, that, that aspect is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, cool. Like, was there anything else that you would have had to say on Chiyu? No. Or not really remembering? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, which is, I, I am, oh, like, oh, feeling I, like... Oh, sorry, oh, go no, on. you say your thing, and then... <laughs> no, it was it was unrelated, so, uh, I'll remember it. Oh, okay. Um, well, just, like, on the topic of Chiyu, I also kind of wanted to bridge that to, like, Peggy Tan. Um, okay. And how there's sort of... I, I, I mainly just, like, love the, uh, like... In the introductory episode, there's a line um, where, like, you know, Peggy Tan is a coward and is very, like, finding courage is very much, like, his arc. And uh, when Chiyu meets Peggy Tan, uh, she has a line where she's like, oh, well, if you don't have enough courage, I'll lend you some of mine. And then, like, towards the end of the series, when Chiyu is kind of struggling with... um, like, how do I tell, you know, like, do I just do the high jump thing or do I tell my family about this stuff? And then Peggy Tan kind of is like, well, yeah, you know, he, he says the exact same thing, basically, that, like, if you don't have mm-hmm. enough confidence, I'll lend you some of mine. And that's kind of a cool, uh, you know, like, full circle moment for, for yeah, those two. Okay. Nice. And I also um, really liked the episode focusing on the girl who is kind of like a latchkey kid and her mom uh, is like working most of the time so she and she doesn't really have friends at school so she feels very isolated and then Peggy Tan kind of gets brought into her life by mistake and then is like ah well I have to go back to Chiyu but I want to make sure that this girl's okay and that she oh, has friends yeah. <laughs> and that was a very touching episode as well okay yeah no I I, I vaguely remember the episode because I those kind of episodes where like you have the uh kid takes home mascot character thinking yeah. it's a stuffed animal right well <laughs> I, I also remember there's one in kira Major, which was airing at the same time where uh they they were fighting a monster and their giant robot gets shrunk down so you have that but it's actually with like the the ro- the giant robots are take shrunken down and taken home as toys so it's, <laughs> it's just a weird twist on so that's what i remembered but no i do remember that episode vaguely um but i am think what i was going to uh, interject with is just i'm feeling thinking, like as far as like rewatching precure seasons go i am having a strong mood to rewatch healing good right now 
now. Like I'm like, fuck <laughs> this. this show. Like, because I I liked it, but I'm thinking it's be- might be better than I remembered. Um, so, uh, you know, I I feel like if I rewatched it, I'd you know, but but also it's like I, I gotta re- I gotta. There's like seven other precure seasons I need to watch that I haven't seen yet. So. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm uh, probably going to watch those before I watch Healing Good, but uh, and also rewatch uh, All Mode and Hug Toe because those were the first two that I watched. So, yeah, um, but yeah, it'll come with time. So the struggle uh, of wanting to watch all of the Precure. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. Um, but uh, as far as like, I yeah, I don't have much more to say about Healing Good. Just, you know, again, like, I feel like I've gotten most of what I remember out there. Uh, so if you have any more points you want to share, like be my guest. Uh but uh, maybe I'll yeah, remember more um, stuff. So um, I am looking through my screen caps to see if there's anything. Yeah, no, that might that might have been it. Okay, I mean, I'm surprised we got as much out of a show I haven't seen in two years. Um, so uh, this will be one of the rare uh, math whiz mostly leading the discussion. When does that ever happen? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that's how we got to do the Nen show from then on. We I read it, then we talk about it two years later after you've read. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, terrible idea. I don't know. That's just, I, you know, I like, no. Um, I would have watched innovating the, show. <laughs> the, the podcast format. Um, hey, Mathews, can you watch or read this thing I checked out two years ago? I'd like to talk about it. What? No, that's so <laughs> stupid. All right. So, yeah, I guess that about covers it. So. Um, oh, right. Actually, um, one, one last little point, because uh, uh, there was the episode where um, Noroka and her family kind of meet up with the doctor who took care of her. And, um, oh, okay. Yeah. There um, is, you know, like the conflict of that episode is sort of like, uh, he quits being a doctor because he wasn't able to help Nodoka and Nodoka then, you know, going back to that, like that note of self-sacrifice or, um, maybe not necessarily self-sacrifice, but like, you know, she feels guilty that like, Oh, it, because you weren't able to help me. And it's because at that point she knows that it's, uh, you know, that it was Daruizen who was the problem, but she, like, can't tell him that. Uh, Mm -hmm. So the fact that, like, he is quitting being a doctor, she's concerned that, like, oh, it's because of me, it's because you couldn't help me, and she feels guilty for that and takes responsibility for it. But, um, you know, he actually wanted to stop being a doctor so he could become, like, a researcher to uh, try to you know, find cures for these, like, unknown mm-hmm. illnesses. And um, so, like, where Nodoka thinks that she was, like, a burden in that way, um, she actually, like, pushed him forward to, um, you know, pursue, like, a new path in life and also try to, like, help the world more. And um, yeah. so, yeah, it's, like, what she, th- what she thought was a burden was actually, like, a good thing. Um, and I like the conversation that the two of them had. Also, I was looking through my notes and I and I there was something I, I caught back then that I forgot about. I'm just gonna read it out loud. Uh Daru Zen's earrings have the same clover design as the spots in Kira Grace's hair, which is like immediately uh... connecting them, apparently. Because Oh my uh, god. <laughs> I, so I caught that at some point apparently, and I was just reading it. And I'm like, oh shit! I, um, so uh, sneaky fucking bastards. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely never paid attention to that. You know, for as many fucking screen caps of Dadoe than I have, because he's a pretty boy. <laughs> I was gonna mention that earlier, where it's like, because you you're like, yeah, he's my favorite precure antagonist. I'm like, yeah, him being a pretty boy probably doesn't help for that at all either. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, I mean, he he's got a good design. To... He's just a pretty devil boy. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, um, he's yeah. edgy. He's uh, not soft at all. He's a piece of shit. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought in general it was kind of interesting how, like, you know, sometimes the precure antagonists are more like monsters or like animalistic, sort of like design sense. Uh, sometimes they are just people. And this was kind of like one of those seasons where it's like, yeah, there's sort of these um, kind of parasites given human form in a way. Um, but yeah, it's like you have, you have the bratty girl, you have the, the pretty boy, the pretty, you know, the pretty emo boy and, um, the like muscle bound himbo dude, uh, which I thought was an interesting, uh, interesting just designs for the season. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what we're talking about next. Uh, did you, um, are, have you already decided what you're watching next? Uh, what I'm watching next, you're going to be happy about cause it's Ojibaja Dori Mi Dokan. Let's fucking go! So we'll finally be able to <laughs> finally be able to finish up the Dora Me discussions. 
Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very good, actually, because, uh, yeah, I, mean, I I think I have it all de- uh, ready to watch. I just need to... Oh, my God. Oh, Can't I'm we can now watch getting Peak excited. Fiction and then <laughs> Max Hart. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I don't have to watch really Max Hart. Really just uh, falling off a um, cliff for me. <laughs> I already watched Max Hart. Ha ha. Um, but, uh, I- I'm also hoping that, like, because I'll be watching a non-Precure season, maybe I'll then... Be- actually catch up to uh hero got our sky pre-cure oh that's right yeah because uh you are a few episodes behind on that um i've I'm only seen one three behind. <laughs> oh no i didn't know you were that many episodes <laughs> behind um i fell way a- off in march in terms of my magical girl episodes and i only just like yesterday caught up by finishing heal and good okay um but yeah all right uh so don't me next time that's exciting so yeah uh i guess Thank you all for listening to this unexpectedly long episode, uh, which I'm glad for. That's awesome. I, I that was I thought that was a fun discussion. But yeah, uh, see y'all next time for uh, motherfucking Doremi. Uh, not the end of Doremi. Well, kind of the end. It's weird. Anyway, all right. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> oh, Daijini.